All set, Brooke? Yep, all set. Perfect. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brady Flax, um, and I'm a member of the Innovation Advisory Team. I'm also a faculty member in the School of Education. So uh, I have the pleasure today of both helping to monitor time as well as monitor the chat for our session. Um, and as Brooke just mentioned, this session is also going to be recorded for future use. So just FYI. Um, so we're going to have four presenters, I believe. Hopefully everybody was able to make it yet today. Um, and we'll start kind of one by one here and then have some, some opportunity for, for questions at the end or however they want to introduce as well. So it's my pleasure first to introduce Maureen. And Maureen, I want to get your last name correct. So if you could help me with that, please. Wazik. <laughs> okay, Wazik. Uh, and Maureen, you're in uh, Research and Integrity and Compliance Office, correct? Yes, that's my title. I'm in the okay. Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. Awesome. We'll take it away, Maureen. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Thank you for the introduction and for having me here today. Um, I am excited to chat with you all about our um, summer research fellowship. So um, as was mentioned, my name is Maureen Wazek. I'm the Research Integrity and Compliance Officer in the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. So um, in addition to assisting faculty um, get external funding opportunities, we have an internal um, funding program called the Summer Research Fellowship. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. And this is a picture from our 2019 group of students and faculty back when we could have <laughs> group, group <laughs> gatherings. Um, so <clears throat> in the focus spirit of the um, SRF program is for students to be allowed an opportunity to work full-time on research with a faculty mentor for a 10 week period over the summer. Um, students should not be holding another employment during that time. It's really to allow them um, to really dive into some research and, and work with the faculty during the summer months. Um, and the results are shared um, with, with the campus community at a SRF symposium during Faculty Welcome Back Week. This year it's gonna be held on August 26th and details will um, on how that will be <laughs> um, held, whether or not it'll be virtual or what format um, will be forthcoming as it gets closer. Um, the award is used to support a research project as appropriate for the field of study. And different from past years, we are allowing creative works and products to be included in the scope of the program. Um, the important thing is that the student's role will be clearly defined. Um, the focus is really to allow students an opportunity to participate and really engage in research. So it's not meant to be like a shadowing of a faculty do research. Um, it's really where the student dives in and does research. We've had um, applications in the past where the student has designed the project um, and uh, has shared it with the faculty and they've worked collaboratively, but it's been the student's um, idea. So um, that can certainly happen as well. But um, you know, the intent is for the students to, to really um, engage in research. And um, because of that focus, the students are paid. So um, they will get a stipend of $4,000 or equivalent to $10 an hour for their work on the SRF. And then we provide the faculty up to $500 for supplies, um, it could also be used for travel following the, um, the fellowship if they wanna attend a, at a conference. Um, nine month faculty um, can work with their college or their department um, and discuss the availability of um, summer salary or PDI funds that might be available by their college dean. And there's a signature line on the application where the dean would indicate whether or not that um, support is available from their college. Um, different from past years, we're only allowing faculty to submit one SRF um, application per cycle. Um, this is really to allow for um, you know, a broad range of uh, faculty to have an opportunity. It's a competitive program and we wanna be able to um, provide opportunities for everybody. Um, also past productivity of SRF funding will be evaluated. So, um, you know, one of the, the goals of this program is to allow um, new faculty or, you know, any faculty that is newly involved in research or, um, you know, wants to get some data um, and then perhaps 
draw, you know, make a bigger um, research project later on. And so our office can certainly help, um, you know, provide external funding at a later time. And this is, you know, the intent is to really have the um, internal funding be sort of like seed money, startup money for the research. Um, so this picture here of our 2019 SRF um, pharmacy student and faculty um, is a great example of that. So Dr. Naibo um, was a 2019 SRF recipient and he has now received an NIH um, grant. So that's um, a wonderful example. We've, we've definitely had faculty who have collected data and um, been in the program for multiple years and then um, transitioned to um, some external funding. So that's a great opportunity that this um, grant can provide. So um, eligibility to apply, we uh, um, you know, are open to students and faculty from all areas and fields. So arts, humanities, social sciences, STEM, health sciences, you name it. Um, students must be in good academic standing. We want them to have at least a 3.0 GPA and be enrolled full-time at Ferris. This is not for seniors. Um, we want students who are gonna be here the next um, semester as well. And that's partially so that they're available um, here in the summer. Sometimes our seniors tend to leave a little earlier um, or may not be there at the um, symposium in August. Um, and the, as I said, the student will work full-time with the faculty for a minimum of 10 weeks. They cannot be taking more than six credit hours in the summer and cannot be employed um, at FSU concurrently. And the faculty also has to be available, right, um, during the summer uh, to allow for this and to supervise the student. Um, and new this year, we're, you know, promoting um, that the program is um, fostering diversity by increasing participation of underrepresented students in summer research and creative experiences in a wide range of disciplines. Um, so the program is extended but not limited to underrepresented minorities, women, first generation college students, geographically underrepresented students, educationally or financially disadvantaged students and students with disabilities. So additional details um, regarding the eligibility is available on, our, on the application on the webpage. Um, there are two meetings that are held. So um, students need to be able to attend those. Um, the 10 weeks, obviously the summer semester is longer than 10 weeks and it going through August um, can, can be well over 10 weeks. So the 10 weeks um, need not be consecutive um, or sometimes the student might be working more than 10 weeks in order to collect their data. Um, the SRF only allows for payment of, the, of 10 weeks, but um, you know, it's not been um, where people and students have taken off for the 4th of July, you know, there is flexibility allowed as well. Um, oh, I went the wrong way. Okay, so the types of proposals funded, um, as we said, the, the program is open to all fields and disciplines. So we have funded all fields and disciplines. And we're in our 10th year, we were unable to um, you know, have, have the program last year with COVID, but, um, this, this will be our 10th year of the SRF, and we have funded research in biology, pharmacy, chemistry, social work, psychology, optometry, humanities, public health, mathematics, plastics. Um, so it's, it's been a wide range of disciplines and opportunities for students. So the above picture is um, an optometry student um, the below is a bi biochemistry student. So the research really varies in so many different aspects from being data analysis to recruiting human subjects or research with animals. Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity for students to get paid during the summer months to stay here on campus and to um, work with a faculty mentor um, if they have an interest in research. So. Um, with that, I think we're going to take questions at the end, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Maureen. And I forgot to mention, too, if you do have a question that pops into your head, um, feel free to use that chat. I'll be monitoring that as well, and we can make sure we get your questions answered. So um, thank you so much. And if you have questions for Maureen, like I said, put those in the chat, write them down, and, and we'll be um, providing some opportunity at the end. So. 
Uh, next up, we have Todd Stanislav. Todd is the director for the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning. Uh, welcome, Todd. Thanks, Brady. Um, because I'm going to be sort of drawing from some of the information that's on the on the website, I thought I would just show it to you. Um, so uh, the Timmy Grants program, uh, you may recognize the name Timmy. It's not uncommon at Ferris. Um, the, the funding for this program uh, is de um, derived from a portion of the earnings from an endowment that Abigail Smith Timmy established um, to support uh, what was then called the Timmy Center for Teaching Excellence. It's gone through a few names um, to where we are now is the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, just FYI, at the, at the time, um, uh, Abigail Smith Timmy's um, gift to the university was the largest at the time and, and stood that way for several, uh, for, for many years, a couple of decades. Um, and you'll recognize her name is attached to the Timmy uh, Center for Student Success. There's also an endowment that supports um, the Flight Library. Um, and we're really fortunate that we also have an endowment that supports the work of the Faculty Center. So you'll notice that um, when the center was established in the late 1990s, you see a quote um, that it was designed to um, encourage and support the enrichment of, of teaching and learning skills. And one expression of that commitment then is the Timmy Grants program that is designed to support teaching and learning. Um, even broader than that, it's also designed to support the scholarly and creative work that faculty do. Um, what the program has, the Timmy Grants program has been a part of the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning since its inception. Um, over the past 10 years, just to take a snapshot of, of, the, of, the, of a funding period, over the last 10 years, the program has made 442 awards uh, to faculty totaling um, just shy of $422,000. Um, and um, there are, as many of you know, there are two funding cycles, um, one that is at the start of, um, of each semester. So to the three questions that kind of frame our session, let me, let me transition to another page. Um, the first question which is, what's the focus or the spirit of this grant, and I think that is um, aptly uh, captured in the second bullet, um, which reads that the grants program supports faculty participation uh, in conferences, symposia, workshops, um, and other professional development and scholarly opportunities. Um, I'll underscore again that the program supports both attending um, and presenting. So. Um, it both there are two levels of funding depending on whether you're a presenter um, presenting your scholarly or creative work. Um, the second question in our um, sort of framework for the session is so so who's eligible? And you can see that that's um, defined here in the in this third bullet that um, full time, part time, uh, tenure track and non tenure track faculty alike are eligible to apply for and receive funds from this program. The third question is, um, so, you know, so what exactly, what types of proposals are accepted um, for the Timmy Grants program? Um, so I'll give a few examples. Uh, this is a, not an exhaustive list of the kinds of, of funding um, opportunity or funding uses of the funding um, that are acceptable, but I'll, so here are a few. So again, whether you're presenting, whether a faculty member is presenting or not, um, the funding can support participation in conferences, symposia, workshop, workshops um, that are a part of your profession or, or academic discipline. Uh, it also supports participation and presentation at um, professional development events that support other kinds of work that you do. For example, um, many, many of you, many faculty are involved in program level um, sometimes department, school, and college level assessment activities. So uh, that's a legitimate, um, you know, finding a, an opportunity for professional growth around assessment. That's a, a viable um, reason for to seek funding. 
um, academic advising, another area of work that faculty are involved in, so professional development around academic advising. Um, we have funded, uh, the program has funded faculty who are seeking professional certifications as a part of um, remaining um, current um, in, in the field um, to participate in webinars and to even to participate in short courses. Um, so in short, the Timmy Grants program is designed to support faculty's um, participation in and, and scholarly work in any kinds of learning opportunities that advance their professional development. Like Maureen, I'm happy to answer uh, whatever questions you might have when we reach the end. So I'll turn it back to you, Brady. Thanks so much, Todd. Yeah, and please, if you have those questions, just add them to the chat. I know we've already received at least one, so feel free to direct your question to who uh, who they need to go to. We'll make sure we get those answered at the end. So next, it's my pleasure to introduce Susan K. Jones. Susan is a professor of marketing in the College of Business and also the chair of um, the Gifts and Grants Committee for the Ferris Foundation. So Susan, welcome. Oh, you're on mute, Susan. Sorry about that. Thank you oh, so much. I am going to share my screen and show you where you can find information about the exceptional merit grants on the Ferris website. So as you can see, um, this is called the merit grant application and we do call it exceptional merit grant. This is for faculty and staff who have an idea that they would like to pursue or they need funding for uh, research or for sometimes for equipment, uh, not so much for travel, but mostly for things that are on campus. Our main question when we look at the grants is how does this serve ultimately the students of Ferris State University? So that is important. It's also important that the grant um, be collaborative. That doesn't mean that one person cannot apply, but we would like to see the grant be used um, in a collaborative manner. So for an example, Andrew Peterson applied alone this last year for the eSports program. However, many, many students and fellow staff are involved in this and also they compete uh, with other schools. So that makes it collaborative. But we really get excited when we see grant proposals across disciplines, across colleges, and maybe faculty and staff working together. Um, so let me just say, this is a very fortuitous time because you, as you can see, the submission deadline is February 26th next week. Don't wait till the last minute though, because you need to get signatures on this from your Dean uh, and department head or in, in the order of department head and dean in order to submit to make sure that your uh, department head and dean believe this is in sync with what your department and college are doing. So as you can see, we will be looking at proposals starting in late March and just a little bit about the procedure. In other times, we would have our grant requesters come to us in um, the university center and make a presentation. Um, sometimes uh, our committee is composed not only of someone hopefully from each college at Ferris, but also from staff and some of my fellow Ferris Foundation um, trustees. So sometimes we'll have people coming in on Zoom to watch the presentations, but ideally we do this in person. Of course, this year, we are going to be doing it by Zoom just for uh, contingency purposes. So in late March, March 25 and 26, the fundies will be uh, meeting us on Zoom. Everyone who applies, assuming that the application meets the standards of the application, which you know, I've never seen anybody who applied not asked to present. Let me just put it that way. We want to hear from you. Sometimes we find we've looked at an application and we've said, huh? But then when the person comes in, it all becomes clear. So we want you to work hard on your application 
but your presentation is also key. So after we have all our meetings with the fund requesting or groups, the uh, grant awards will be announced on April 12th, and then you will have the 21-22 academic year in order to um, make your, your project happen. Now, rest assured, we do have flexibility because of COVID. We, at, at our, you can see we have a mid um, semester or mid, mid grant period um, report in, and a few of our grantees were um, unable to complete their projects because of COVID. So we have allowed them to carry through. So the most important thing is if you're given a grant, keep communicating with us and let us know how it's going. And then this in April, your final report will be due. And one or two of the um, grant recipients will be asked to present in our fall meeting of the committee which is very fun for us and for them to say, we got this money, we did this, how cool. <laughs> the other thing that we ask our grant recipients to do is attend the Ferris Foundation banquet. And again, you know, COVID disrupts everything. The banquet was virtual this year um, and it was a canned presentation, but if everything is, um, as, as they say, and we all have our vaccines, that there will be a, uh, a in-person banquet in the first weekend of November of 2021. So let's hope that happens. And our grant recipients are asked to come to that and Ferris pays for their ticket, the foundation pays for their ticket so that we can celebrate them. So the other thing that I need to uh, help you understand is the importance of, <laughs> I didn't write this, somebody with a very, very, uh, anal retentive mind wrote that, <laughs> but uh, the proposal content is very, very important. Um, so you can see all the elements that you have to have here, and I'm just going to give you a few tips. Um, please do not skimp on any of these. And remember, we are comparing you to other grant requesters. Are you serving the students of Ferris? Is this exceptional? You know, the we call it exceptional grants. So don't just say I'd like um, three pieces of equipment because I need them, you know, that kind of thing. That's not really going to be all that competitive. Explain um, the timeline for this and it needs to be within that uh, academic year period. Very important, how will you disseminate this beyond the university, hopefully, or at least within the university? How will other people know about it? Will you be able to present about it at a conference, for example, or will uh, your partners be doing uh, press releases about what you've done to bring um, honor to Ferris State University? Something that is very important, particularly to me, is making sure that you weave in how your proposal fits with the, um, the goals of Ferris State University, okay? So that Again, we're not just going off to the side to do something. This fits with what Ferris's um, goals and objectives are at this time. And then the budget, very important. We've had some uh, grant requesters turned down because, okay, we can give as much as $7,000. I'll give you that to any one grant. Um, people would put down $7,000 and zero cents as their budget. Uh, no, <laughs> we need to know exactly what you're spending money on. It doesn't have to be the cent, but please give us an idea of what is going to be spent and how it's going to be spent. Uh, very, very important. And then uh, we do sometimes fund equipment. We've been quite merciful on that. And it seems like every year, no matter what the economy is doing, um, the university cuts budget. But um, you need to really justify why this equipment needs to come from us and not from your department, your college, the university. Um, and we don't fund food and beverage and cute napkins or any of that kind of thing. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers it. I just cannot admonish you enough to make sure that you follow all these instructions. If you have any questions about it, please contact Kim Erickson. You can see her contact information down here. 
She is the guru of how to do this. And if you have trouble with the form, there's also a place for you to, I've um, opened up all these Q and A's here. There's uh, someone you can ask about, Kay McIver will help you with the form. And if you ask Kim, she can hook you up with a grant writer to get some help with your um, application. So I think that covers what I'm supposed to cover. And we, I mentioned before we all went live here, this is the most fun committee because we actually have money to give away and we want to give it away to great projects. Thank you so much, Susan. And thanks for those great links too. Um, same thing, if you have any questions for Susan, please uh, make sure you slide them into the chat or we will have some time at the end for you to ask them in person as well. So, um, and just like Susan here with her timeline getting very busy in the next couple of weeks, uh, we have a very busy person that we're honored to have in here today as well. Uh, our next presenter is Brooke Moore. And Brooke, I'm sure is uh, extremely busy today with everything going on with our conferences, but uh, we're glad to have you here. And Brooke is a coordinator of Innovative Initiatives. Um, and thanks again, Brooke, for being here. Welcome. Thanks, Brady. Um, Susan, can you stop sharing your screen? Oh, I'm sorry. That's certainly. okay. No, that's okay. I just don't think there I can share. I don't think there I can go. share mine until. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, I need to pay attention. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> if that's the worst thing that happens today, we're all going to be in good shape, right? So, um, so thank you very much for this time. It's really nice to be in the company of these three other people because you can tell just by hearing them talk that um, they're good stewards of the money that they have. Um, they care about helping faculty and students. And I think that um, that carries over into the innovation development grant as well. So uh, I started this job last January. Uh, I was literally on the job for two months and then uh, COVID hit, so super fun. And uh, this, this grant was developed because there was such a need for innovation at the university level. And if you'll notice, if you've taken the time to read the strategic plan, you'll notice that the word innovation pops up quite a bit. And so, um, right away, I knew I was going to need some help. I'm literally kind of an office of one. And so um, we brought, up, brought on board about 26 faculty and staff to assist with um, developing the process for the Innovation Development Grant and to also assist with the event that you see today. So Brady is an example of a person who's on the Innovation Advisory Team who has been tapped to kind of help with that work. And so what we decided or what we, um, you know, what we kind of worked through is uh, we wanted to kind of cement the innovation development grant in the strategic plan. So we looked through the documents and, and it was, became very evident that what Ferris was looking for was, was, was a grant that was academic driven. Um, that would drive academic driven innovation. And so we, uh, we made a very specific purpose statement that um, we would, our goal would be to help those that were trying to get in innovative initiatives, programs, or courses off the ground, that we would try to make a commitment to that. Um, we also are looking for ways that innovative practices, if they're, if they're connected to academics in some way or students in some way, that we would be able to kind of support that work. And I'm not going to go into too big a detail in terms of um, the, the form itself, but the website that you see in front of you, if, and literally if you type innovate in the, in the in the tax taskbar or the search bar, uh, you can find the innovation development grant, and it is set up in a way where. Um, oh, I'm not to that part. Okay, uh, let me tell you a little bit. Let me back up. So we fund faculty and staff um, again. That's built around academic um, academic driven innovation, and I thought it would be helpful to show you the the grants that we have. Bobby talked about these this morning, but. These three grants are the grants that we have funded. And uh, I don't know if any of you went to Rusty Leonard's and Muhammad Abishark's presentation today, but the autonomous vehicle program is, is fascinating. Um, it's not anything that I know in any great depth, but after watching their presentation, um, it's, it's literally amazing what they've been able to accomplish. And they were really stuck because they needed some funding to develop some prototypes to get this off the ground. 
And so the funding that we were able to um, provide to them allowed them to um, take a whole semester of concentrated work and make some significant progress. And the progress that, that they were able to show today shows us, um, shows, shows us the things that can happen when you have the funding behind something. Uh, and these grants are, or these projects are very different. And that's the other reason I think it's important to kind of take a look at them. The second one, um, these three ladies, Carolyn, Rita, and Michelle, they were very interested in having a, an experimental course that combines social work and criminal justice. And I don't know if some of you may know that Michelle Stone has a criminal justice background. And because of all the things that were happening in the world, there are obvious, there's, you know, they were feeling that, that there was a huge disconnect between social work and um, criminal justice and how they think about things and how they see things. And so they're hoping that by establishing this course that not only uh, social work people will take, students will take it, but also criminal justice um, students will take it. And there will, that will kind of bridge that understanding of, of, um, of the two worlds, so to speak. The last one, again, like I said, these are very different, but the last one is um, really cool because it's, it's our first uh, experience with in a, in a possible intellectual property. And so Lena, Shannon, and Pam are from College of Health Professions and Luke is from CET. I don't know if any of you went to his makerspace uh, presentation this morning, but he's helping them uh, with a prototype of a body, this is going to sound strange, but it's a head and a torso and one arm. And what they found during COVID is that students could not practice some of the critical skills that they needed to be able to practice um, in the medical field without being in person. And so they are, the, the funding that we granted for this project will go to make a prototype of a, of a kind of like a plastic body, sort of, I guess, the, the way that I would describe it from the pictures would be like a CPR dummy, sort of, except um, it can it can have a port inside it, it can have the ability to take medicine, um, you can patch a wound, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. And the idea would be that they would, the student would be able to, if they were if they had to be teaching online, the student would actually have something that they could work on or that they could videotape themselves working on the body and doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, you know, putting in a port or things like that. And so it's really exciting um, in terms of what could happen with it because um, it, it's something that when I brought it up to Tom Dowling, he was like, yes, they should definitely think about this being intellectual property. So we've taken all the steps to make sure that if they end up wanting to do that, they'll have the ability to do that. So those are just some examples. And uh, I got ahead of myself earlier, but uh, the way that our grant works, and like I said, I'm not gonna go into super major detail, but there's a phase one. And sometimes people aren't sure if, they're, if their concept fits with our grant. And so if you can only do phase one and just see if the grant is a good fit for you. And so the nice thing about just only doing phase one is you're, you don't have as much time and commitment put into it. You can just kind of see like, you know, hey, I can fill this out and kind of see if this is working. And it actually works out really well. So you get feedback from a, a review team of five that comes from the innovation advisory team. Uh, we would give you that feedback. And then you could make that decision whether you want to move on to phase two. We've had equally as many people do phase one and phase two together. So it, it doesn't matter whether you do just phase one or if you do phase one and phase two. The only thing it impacts is uh, the way that our, our funding cycle is working right now is we have roughly $25,000 that we, that we try to award during each semester. So for example, um, the, the first semester in the fall semester, the first semester we ran it, uh, we awarded around $18,000. And then this semester so far, we've awarded 3,000. So where it comes into play, whether you should do phase one or phase two is, you know, how much money has been awarded, right? Because if you're, if you come in, if you're coming in late to the game and you do your phase one, 
and then you wait a long period of time in between the time that you submit phase two, it's possible that the funding might not be there. So it's just kind of, uh, we do rolling deadlines. That's the other thing that I wanted to make sure you knew. Um, and that gives you an idea of kind of how, how all that works. So, and that is what I have. And I am happy also, as everyone else is, to take any questions that anybody may have on our grant as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brooke. Uh, and I want to commend our panelists. On uh, part of my job was to keep them on track for time, <laughs> and they pretty much nailed uh, the exact time. So, so you guys are doing awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we will open it up for questions at this time, and I know we had one in the chat. Um, uh, Maureen had a question for Susan on how is the research program promoted, and is the idea to come from the professor, or can students suggest an idea? And if so, do they go to a professor to ask uh, for the professor's support? That was actually Susan asking Maureen, but that is- Oh, did I reverse it? <laughs> <laughs> Maureen I'll, might say, gee, we'll I, I could answer that. <laughs> we'll let you each ask each other. So yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, yes, thank you for the question, Susan. Um, so we promote the program via university-wide notices um, and word of mouth. Um, you know, it being in its 10th year, I think it's pretty well, um, an, an established part. It's also a big part of the Welcome Back Week. So um, you will hear, see more university-wide notices. Kudos to um, Brooke Moore for the, um, you know, <laughs> the <blast. onset. laughs> uh, Yeah, no, it's been, it's, um, oh. that has, I think, been wonderful for this Hatch program. And so I think that's something, mm -hmm. you know, that you'll be seeing in the coming months with the SRF. Um, but really the idea for research, it can come from either the faculty or from the student. Um, sometimes faculty know which students they kind of want to pick or, you know, um, there are faculty who are working on research um, or have research ideas and they want to, um, and they have students in mind that they want to ask and say, hey, would you be willing to stick around over the summer and, and um, you know, be a research assistant? Other times students have an idea and they go up to their faculty. Um, an example I would think is in our um, in public health, we had a student who had a uh, survey that they wanted to distribute um, to ask about vaccine trends and rates. And um, so got together with one of their public health professors who was teaching about, you know, vaccines and, um, you know, and, um, you know, how often people, you know, the trends of vaccines. And so, um, it just, it ended up being a great fit. Um, the question is often asked, like, does the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs, can you, you know, um, create that collaboration between the faculty and the student? Um, well, that's not really our function, but, um, you know, you can always email research at ferris.edu. Um, we've definitely had students reach out to us and, and um, you know, let us know about an idea or something. But um, one thing I forgot to mention is the application deadline. So I just, I do want to share my screen real quick and show um, <laughs> the website. The applications are due uh, March 12th. And so generally around this time, um, faculty and, um, and students will, will know, they'll, they'll start to on their application. So um, really we just post it. We, we promote the program by university-wide notices and just um, having former, um, you know, faculty mentors or students share with their other colleagues, you know, that this is a, an opportunity for them if they are interested in research. And so our application is there. Um, so download that and we ask to be scanned. Your signatures are needed um, as a PDF and get that to us via email um, by uh, 5 p.m. Friday, March 12th. Also on our webpage, you can locate the past summer fellows. And so this is nice and um, goes through each year and you can see, so for 2019, which was our last year, um, we have the, the faculty, we have the student and a brief ab abstract of, of their research. And so you can see the different fields and disciplines that were awarded. So um, thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much and thanks for the reply. Uh, I don't see any other questions in chat at this time, but is there any other questions that people want to ask? Yeah, Dan, go ahead. Yeah. Well, this is, I guess, for Susan and Brooke combined. Um, I got a little five-year-old making noise in the back. <laughs> it's okay. She's, she, we've got a project. She's got her penny board out and she's calling 50 pennies for me and putting them in penny sleeves. That's 
<laughs> we welcome that. interruptions like that all the time, Dan. That's awesome. Good. <laughs> say hi, quick. This is my friends. Come here, quick. Oh, you've anyway. got you've got your uh, okay. Maybe we we can't see like her yet. Like, yeah, she's got to get close. Hmm. Yeah, you've got a buddy. bridge behind you. There. Oh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go back to your putties. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have I have an idea, I guess, for a, for a project. But I'm guess is there an opportunity to combine things that Brooke is doing, the things that the foundation is doing, into a kind of one grant to you know get some extra money or, or money and time and things like that for a potential oh, a, new thing that Ferris doesn't have. I guess. Great question. Um, this is so, um, one thing I didn't mention that's actually you're going to see if you apply with the Gifts and Grants Committee is where else are you getting money? Mm -hmm. We ask so, that too. Um, yeah. we, we like it when somebody's okay. uh, assertively going out mm -hmm. and saying, I'm not putting all my eggs in this basket. Yeah. So you would apply separately, but I think we would love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's been that's, a while since I've applied for one. So. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know, and it's um, it's good to know too. Like, I think we we've had at least one person, and it's nice to know what you got the money for. Like, someone who might apply and say, "I got five hundred dollars for um, to attend this conference for you know," and it might be related to what they're doing. So, you kind of get an idea, you know, what they have already. So that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Thank you very much for that question, Dan. Other questions? Uh, we still have about six or seven minutes, so we could entertain questions. So, yeah. oh, I got one more thing. Brooke, is this the one that is the 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 one you talked about? Is it the one that's the two part one? That there is a like a first half that you could do, and then a second half. We already talked about that in a meeting not long ago. Yeah, so it's it, it's a phase one, phase two. You can do them at the same time if you want to. Okay. Um, some people choose to only do the phase one first to get feedback because they may not want to put the time in to do the second half of it. So, so you can do that. Um, and I've had, I would say we've, we've received approximately nine applications and probably half of the people have done only phase one and then done phase two. So it just depends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cause it'd be like, in my case, this would be for a new course. I maybe a couple courses. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm just in my mind, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to build this, how I'm going to put it in a, put yeah. it in a I guess well, I, would, I would like yeah. some feedback. On what it. I would encourage you to do is um, there's a PDF of the form on the website. Just go and look yep. at it. And if you have any okay. questions, just call me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, if we don't see any, maybe I'll ask on our uh, panelists, maybe just to give us one more reminder about maybe some of their deadlines or information, just to kind of a closing to cap it off for us. I have one oh, question um, um, for Brooke with the, I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but this is, is this the first year of the innovative grant? Okay. Yeah. So we started awarding in August, essentially. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> yeah, okay. this is our yeah. second, second whole semester. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Sounds yeah. like a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thanks. So the uh, uh, merit grants for faculty and staff due uh, on February 26th. And Kim Erickson is put on a couple places on there. Do not be late. <laughs> yeah. No extensions. Yeah. Okay. Good, good reminder and heads up. Todd, go ahead. The Timmy Grants program, um, the funding cycle is currently closed. It closed actually Monday. Um, and the next cycle will be uh, launched at the start of the fall semester. Great, thank you. Maureen, you wanna go ahead? I'll go sure. last. <laughs> um, ours um, is gonna be due Friday, March 12th. Um, 5 p.m. to the research email. It's got to be scanned, have signatures. Um, um, there's also a student statement that needs to be there as well. Um, and so, yeah, March 12th. Historically, we have it the Friday before spring break, but this year, <laughs> spring break is, uh, is kind of deferred. So we decided to allow another, <laughs> another week. So um, the 12th okay. of March. Thank you, Maureen. Yes, thank you.
And I guess my only thing that I would say is um, our, ours are rolling deadlines. Just keep in mind that the funding, when the funding's gone, the funding's gone. So, you know, that is, I mean, it's rolling, but it's not like you can just kind of do whatever you want. Um, the other thing that I would say is um, be mindful if you're going to apply that what you're doing needs to be innovative. Now, it doesn't ha necessarily have to be something brand new. And I think that's one thing that gets people hung up. It could be improving a, an existing process. It could be helping out in a different way. But um, you definitely need to make the case that what you're doing is innovative. So just kind of keep that in mind. Terrific. Thank you, Brooke. And, and uh, thanks to all of our panelists, obviously, for the great information. Um, I know all of you are, are very accessible to if people have follow up questions or any information they need. So we really appreciate that. And um, once again, we're, we're open for any parting questions here. Otherwise, we thank everybody for their time today. Thanks for coming, everybody. Good to see you. Yep. Good to see you all. <laughs> thanks, Brady. All right. Thank yeah. you all. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. You too. Brooke, good luck with everything else closing out today. So. <laughs> thank you.